uh, pet wellness is going to grow, I don't know, 10 times better, more than human. Um, you know, the whole shift with, you know, the baby boomers and their pets and even millennials and all that with their pets. We love them. Like, like I've said, what's going to happen. This is the, 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 uh, what I'm reading is. Welcome to the natural products marketer podcast. I'm Tina. And I'm Amanda, and we're here to make marketing easier for natural products businesses so you can reach more people and change more lives. Hi there, Brenda. It's so nice to have you on the podcast today. We're looking forward to this conversation. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be here. I I'll share my stories and everything <laughs> with you. So most of you listening have heard of Brenda Watson. You've probably heard her speak. You've sold her products for years and years. Uh, Brenda is definitely the digestive queen of the industry. And we're so excited to have you here, Brenda. Um, one thing that we always love to talk to our guests about is how they got into the natural products industry, because I feel like most of us have a similar story where we had some sort of health crisis that got us into that. Are you, are you in that boat or do you have a different story? No, I have that story just much further back. <laughs> Than, than some of the people in it today. My my story goes back into the 80s. So yes, I had a similar, uh, I'll share that with you. Okay. Um, yes, I, I, I started, uh, I was born uh, with autoimmune and did not know all the years that um, all through my elementary school, high school, all that I was sick all the time, given tons of antibiotics. As a result of that, I didn't know it back then, but my gut was ruined. And um, about, I guess it was uh, around 1986, 87, I walked into a health food store one day down in South Florida and said, whatever's happened in my life with traditional doctors is not working anymore and I need help. And believe me, back there, then there wasn't much, you know, to help us with. But there was information, there was diet changes, there was juicing back then, things like that, that I began to do personally for myself that changed my life. You know, it it, it literally transitioned me into an, another life. And as a result of that, I'm like, hmm, I want to help others. It just gave me that desire to help others. So I went back to school in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, for nutrition, uh, colonics, colon hydrotherapy, which is legal in the state of Florida. And I uh, apprenticed in natural health clinics over the early 90s and then uh, finished my schooling in herbology and all of that and began to work with clients on detoxification. And specifically, I worked in clinics that we did the colonics, the steaming, the wrapping the body in clay wraps, you know, all the different things we did back then. And as a result of that, I worked under an uh, apprenticeship for many years and I decided to open my own natural health clinics in about 92, 1992. And I put in five natural health clinics. Uh, you know, it was a uh, uh, Palm Harbor, Clearwater, Tampa, uh, Sarasota, and Ormond Beach over on the East Coast. And I was a CEU provider for the state of Florida. So I taught a lot of these people, uh, especially women transitioning into wanting to be in the natural health field. And I could certify them in like colonics and different things like that from the state because I was certified by the state to teach. And so as a result of that, all of these wonderful women ran all my clinics. And then as I became more involved in the health food store industry, they bought those clinics. And so they had a life, a great business and a great life. And I'm so proud of that, really. And so transitioning into that uh, from my poor health and seeing other people get better through the gut. And remember, when I started actually lecturing for health food stores was maybe 90, 1993. I was terrified. I mean, uh, a store in Naples calls me one day and says, Brendan, we want you to come down and teach our uh, customers about constipation. And I went, oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I work in a clinic. You know, I can teach you guys in the store about it, but I don't really, that's not my thing talking to people, but I did it. And that was, you know, when the, the, the student's ready, the teacher appears. And I did it that first time and I couldn't stop. And that's how I got involved uh, in the natural products industry, because in a clinic, see, I am uh, at that time, you know, we had a lot of single herbs 
And being an herbologist, I began to put herbs together in formulas. And I was using those in the clinic with my clients. Well, my husband said to me one day, you need to put that in a health food store. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I boxed up my first uh, kit, which was a parasite cleanse and uh, an enzyme and a fiber. And I put it in a health food store and Renew Life Formulas was born from that. And then I began out to get out in the industry and educate the stores and consumers for the last, since 1995, 9495. Wow. Oh man, look, listen, this is not on our list to ask, but just as you're talking about it, I'm so curious, you have um, such a wealth of knowledge from the industry. What's changed the most over the years that you've been in this industry? What's changed the most? Uh, people are sicker than ever. I, I actually had this vision <laughs> when I was younger that, you know, as we got along, people would get better. But due to the in, in with pharmaceuticals and toxins and all that, they're much worse because now our second our generations after us are born with autoimmune more. And I think that's a problem. But what's changed with the industry is it's still the I, I t- sort of the the think tank of, you know, the creativity, whether it's a supplement or the food or what it is, that's still there. What has changed and turned over is a lot of the people, kind of the people like me who were the founders of it have moved on, you know, retired, their children have come into it. Uh, uh, and, and it's changed in a little bit that but because, you know, private equity came in and bought everybody out to the, to a great degree and big businesses in there. Uh, and Amazon has, you know, done what it's done to our industry. Uh, the big change is I don't see as much uh, I would say the the as it's being passed down to different people that sometimes that I don't know that kind of caring love that that I feel this industry still has I don't want to say it doesn't have does not have but I think it's people like me and other people that are still in the industry that can pass that on to these new owners or new business people that are into independent re- retailers so that's what's changed what changed is Amazon private equity. And then I think sometimes people coming into this that aren't like is like they didn't come from the poor health. You know what I mean? They came, they're coming from it, from a business, which is fine. You know what I mean? That is fine. You got to make money and have a life, but that's what I've seen the difference in And, and putting that heartfelt energy back into the stores is what I'd love to see to the owners of it now. Like we care you know, the caring and not that they don't care. I'm not saying it, but that's the dip. There's a bit of a shift there with that piece. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely see that. Um, yeah. And I'm, you know, a rookie compared to you, but, you know, even just being in the health food stores for, you know, eight years now, kind of just seeing, seeing how that transition has taken place. I, I definitely see it. So you're spot on there. Um, Tell me a little bit more about your journey into starting Vital Planet. Um, Cause I remember, uh, the first time that I heard about Vital Planet, uh, you were actually giving us a lecture on the pet supplements. And I think you kind of st- started with that, um, kind of led into that and then added supplements for the entire family. So I'd love to hear kind of what your thought process w- was with that and how that has just um, blossomed into literally, I mean, a brand for the entire family, uh, which I think is just really cool. Well, what happened is, as, as you and I, um, we had Renew Life. I had Renew Life, and it was about 2015, and um, we had partners. Things were dicey there, and um, I had a personal tragedy, which I, I'm able to communicate now to people. Um, I lost a child. I lost my son in 2015, and so I went into a very terrible time in my life uh, of depression, and um, Renew Life was sold, and I, I guess you could say that I percolated on that for quite a few years. My husband actually stayed by my side and said, Brenda, you know, we've always loved animals, right? 
I've been an animal lover forever. And um, when we left out, out of Renew Life, I had non-competes. Now, I didn't even know who Renew Life sold to because at that point in time, I just had no ability to really communicate well. And so my husband and my son-in-law came over. We got this place where we are now, and we started the Vital Planet Pets because of the non-competes. And I thought, wow, this is great. Now I can focus on pets. You know, I can say more about pets sometimes than we can say about human health. And so we started Vital Planet. And, you know, I started getting out there like you saw me out teaching with pets. And, you know, guys, I went to a couple of the uh, road shows that Simpa organization puts on during that time. And um, this was probably about, I I think, maybe 2000 and was it 17, somewhere in there. Yeah. I'm at a show. It's retailers in the audience. And there's different people up there presenting different subjects. Some of them help, some of them business practices and different things. And what I felt in that room with retailers was a bit of fear, right? A bit of fear around Amazon, what's happening to the industry. And I knew map policy. I knew map policy because um, I had fought it at Renew. And I so as I heard these these people talking, I said, well, at Vital Planet, we're going to do zero map. <laughs> and my son-in-law looked at me and I went, no, we're going to do zero map. And so we came in with the pets and I thought, I don't know if I can ever go back in the industry again, because I don't know if I've got it inside of me, uh, you know, that that passion, that hope, that drive that that I've always had, I had, it had kind of dwindled in me. But when we got into the human side and then then all this science was out there on gut health, you know, the microbiome project was really clamping along. And I thought, you know, I would have never, guys, come back in this industry with the Me Too product, really. I needed new science and I found the new science. And so from the animals, I thought, wow, probiotics, they're in our animals, they're in us. How many of us love our animals? I mean, I love my animals. Oh, they, I cherish them. So I started with the uh, new science and probiotics with Vital Planet. So now we have the digestive care for the whole family, right? And that's kind of how it clogged along with Vital Planet. But I did it differently. Um, because the map policies and what I saw the changes in the industry at the time, I didn't feel driven as much to to do before I loved the health food store and I was driven to the health food stores, but now it was a different level of being driven. I wanted to feel like I was part in saving something, hmm. not the person that saved it, but a part of it because I can feel it. I can feel it from you guys. I can feel it from those of us who care. And that's what started driving me was how can we protect the independent retailer? How can we be a part of the solution, not the problem? And so that piece of it and me staying in digestive care, which is my spot, you know, where what I know and I intend to stay there. And that's what drove me on was the passion to help the retailer and vendors and manufacturers also to follow suit with, with, you know, what we talk about with map policy and all of that. So then the, the, you know, I, I've always been a sort of a visionary in the way that I don't have, God didn't give me just this outline and say, okay, this is what you're going for. I just go for it. <laughs> and I know that everything I need will be dropped in my lap whenever I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. And so the new science and probiotics came out and I said, oh, I can get out now and train the new, uh, and train the health food store retailers on the new science and a new new way to help our microbiome. And then, of course, the whole cleansing concepts and all that that I've had in my being forever came about. So that's, that's how. Yeah. And I'm curious, um, how how is the, the pet side of things continued to grow? Because I've seen that just from the, the retail perspective that that category seems to continue. Um, have you added new products to that line since you've started? And kind of where are you seeing the trajectory with, with pet wellness? Uh, pet wellness is going to grow, I don't know, 10 times better, more than human. Um, you know, the whole shift with, you know, the baby boomers and their pets and even millennials and all that with their pets. We love them. Like, like I've said, what's going to happen. This is the, the 
the uh, what I'm reading is because we tend to want to do for our pets what we do for ourselves. Now, having said that, I want to say something about Vital Planet. We sell supplements for pets. We don't sell treats necessarily. I mean, we can take our supplement and pretend it's a treat to the dog because we do chewies and things like that. However, our products and the products that are going to grow in the pet industry are supplements. So, for example, you have a person with, uh, you know, joint problems, you know, and we know, you know, hyaluric acid, we know chondroitin, glucosamine and all the things that we as humans have used for years are now we want to give them to our pets who have hip and joint problems. And we don't want to give them fluff. Most of the people out there selling are selling treats. There's very few selling supplements that are therapeutically formulated. And so in Vital Planet, the difference in us and what I see now as a big trajectory in what's going to happen with people in the field, I mean, people that consumers is, oh, my dog has a, a gut dysbiosis or my gut, the gut's out of balance. They need a strong probiotic just like I do. They need a strong hip and joint just like I do. If they have diarrhea, they don't need to go to the vet unless it's, you know, something in crisis to get a diarrhea formula. We've got firm stool. You know what I mean? We just pumpkin, which is natural and it, and it helps them. So what I'm seeing is pet is going to skyrocket in the, in, in, in the, in the coming years. Now, where are we in the industry? You've got many retailers who have tapped into this, many of them in the independent retailer, but there are hundreds out there, Amanda, who have not at all. And you go in and you speak to them and they're like, oh, the pet stuff, it's over there in the corner if they even have it, right? And I'm like, you don't understand. You've got a customer coming in here who wants to do as just as much for my, my Lily and Lacey, my little Lily and Lacey. I want to do as much for them as I do for myself. I don't want to see them suffer with hip and joint problems. I want to do something for me. I've got the awareness. I want to do something preventively, preventively to them, you know, so they don't end up with hip and joint problems. You know what I mean? So that consciousness is getting ready to really skyrocket because what you see even on Amazon and on the e-commerce lines are more treats, but we've got to, you know, just, it takes education to the consumer that there are companies out there that can provide therapeutic supplements like what we have in the health food stores. So my point is, if we could get some of these independent retailers to merchandise it correctly, to put some focus on it, education on it, it would be such a good, not only a revenue stream, a new revenue stream that's going to grow, but something that helps, you know, really helps uh, people and they feel comfortable about helping, you know, their pets. Well, and the thing I love about that too, Brenda, is if they're already coming to your store for supplements and they have a pet, it's a one-stop shop. They don't have to go somewhere else to look for what they're trying to provide for their pet. And if they're talking to you about their health, which mostly they are, because we have this consultative approach in the independent market. And so they're going to talk to you about their pets too. Like, hey, they scratch all the time. Do you have anything that might help? Can we try that? And people will spend so much money on their pets for sure. Are you kidding? Great. Yes, they will. And the thing of it is, is, you know, um, if you've got a customer coming in that understands joint, you know, they go to this joint, uh, you know, the joint section. Here's another thing. Why not put your pet stuff cross merchandise it? Why don't you put it in the human joint place? Why don't you put the pet, uh, I don't know, diarrhea formula in your, in your digestive care set, cross merchandise that. So it, it begins the awareness for the consumer, right? The consumer says, Oh, that's a supplement. Oh, okay. That's the way we start the process. That's another way we're teaching the independent retailer too, like how, how to merchandise these things, not just sticking it in the corner by the pet side, but putting it in the human side and begin to teach this consumer coming in. There's supplements for your animals preventively, you know, or if they're having an acute problem, they've got a supplement for that. So it's very important, that whole education process to the retailer. Yeah. Um, you know, you've mentioned independent retailers multiple times just in the last few minutes. And I think one of the things that struck out to me the most when I was uh, on your website preparing for this interview was that 
you are probably the only brand that I can think of off the top of my head that has a find a health food store at the top of their (laughs) website. And, you know, other brands have store locators, but you have to dig for them and all of that. But this is specifically for a health food store. It's not, you know, just any, any store that they could possibly found in. What, what is it that makes the independent channel so important to you? Because to me, that just screams, we care about the independence. Well, what makes it so important is, you know, going back to my history and seeing, and I'm not talking, it doesn't have to be a big independent retailer. It can be a small mom and pop shop. But for my, my story, my journey into health food, those, those people supported me. You know, they, li- they, they heard my story. They heard my experience. They listened to me. They took on my concepts. They let me into their stores to train their consumers as well as their employees. And I see that, that we, we can't lose that. We can't lose that heart and soul of our industry. So that's what makes me move toward the independent because of my journey. That's, that's who supported me all through my, what, 20 something years, 25 years that I tromped across this country. Before, you know, you look at, say, Sprouts. Sprouts was a fruit stand when I started. (laughs) I mean, I was back before Whole Foods was barely started. You know what I mean? So I come way, way back. And they supported me. They listened to me. The consumers, I love the consumers that come into independent retailers because they're looking. I call it the destination of last resort because here's what it is. They have health issues. They've tried to solve them through the medical model. It has not worked. That's what happened to me. I tried to solve my problems, even though it was way back. We didn't have a lot. I mean, the only thing on the shelf back then was psyllium husk. I mean, seriously. And Sony 7, there was no digestive care. I built that digestive care section, the SKUs and all of that in that over a period of probably 15 years. We came out and then other companies followed, which was great. You know, we we got a whole digestive care set across. And so when I go back to, you know, your roots, you go back to who supported you, you go back to who you want to continue to support. It's because the consumer coming into those stores are looking for answers because they've been turned down in every way. And we're there. Man, I love that so much. Um, We are 100% behind supporting the independent retail channel, and we want to help them grow. Sometimes it feels like they're um, diminishing and like some people are not making it or they're just slightly um, surviving. And we would love to see the whole channel thrive. And it feels great to know that there are manufacturers out there like you guys that are fully supportive of that, that independent channel. And that makes me think, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, it just makes me think about um, what independent channels could do to make it even more attractive for people like you to support them and wholeheartedly invest in that channel. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I had a lot of, you know, how you have the lights on. And one of the things I never until um, probably the last, this must be about five years ago. And I was in my, my head, I'm wondering, like, how is this going to happen to the independent retailer with, you know, when I first cognited on the, the map policy and Amazon and and what we were going to do and how I saw a lot of fear there. And so what I thought of is I, so I go to this store and I'll go to the store, but I'm traveling out. I'm, I'm, I'm now pioneering the new probiotics into the independence and I'm in Ohio and um, I haven't, and I walk into this health food store that I'm doing some training in independent, been there 40 years, you know, children's there, everybody's there. And I see that she has totally revamped her selection of supplements. And I kind of didn't understand it. I mean, she had a beautiful store, but what she had done and others like her have done is they have found lines. Okay. Maybe some of them a little bit newer uh, that, you know, whether it's a full line supplement or like us, digestive care. And, and what they've done is they fill the store with innovative lines that aren't mass market lines. Okay. This is my, 
I did an interview, and this will go back to this. I did an interview probably 15 years ago, and somebody brought it to me the other day. I think it's on YouTube. And I was in Toronto because, you know, we had a big company in, in, in Canada. And I was in Toronto, and someone stuck a microphone in my and asked me this question. I said, what do you see as the future of the uh, independent retailer? And I didn't know what to say because back then we were flourishing and everything was good. But this is what I said. Must have come from God, right? What I said was, I think that the independent retailer will become the boutique of the world, in our world, in the U.S. at least. I think that you will go there for unique supplements, unique formulas that haven't been bought out by mass market or ha- you know that aren't on Amazon. Where on Amazon, I mean, you'll trade your probiotic for a $2 reduction in price, regardless of whether you're getting a supplement that's quality or not. You're all about price. And I'm not saying that I don't totally have heart for people with financial considerations because I do. So my, my went back to that store and I thought, man, what a creative woman that is. Because what she did was anything in there that was heavily discounted online or anything in there, she found this wonderful substitute for it in a better formula, a better supplement. You see what I mean? And I'm like, wow. And that's when it came on to me that what I had said 15 years ago was probably going to, to be the what happens. However, you said that a lot of these retailers haven't caught on yet. They really haven't. They still think they've got to have this and that. And I can name, and I think too, on the vendor side of it, on the manufacturing side of it, we need, like Vital Planet needs to work with this company and this company and this company together as, you know, people holding the MAP policy. And if anyone listening doesn't understand that, it's keeping your your discounts at a at whatever level you determine is your company online and you hold to it. And so I was looking at it and thinking, why don't we come together as as re, as uh, manufacturers? You know what I mean? On that end of it. But what I saw that woman did in that store and I asked her, I said, you know, you've done a really good job in here of replacing anything that was on your shelf. That's now, you know, on Amazon. She said, I work at it. She said, I can find something in every category that's a better product and that has that has consciousness and ethics behind what they're doing to help the people. Because ultimately, what are we doing here? We're here to serve our brothers and sisters. That's what we come into this planet for. And again, go going back to the, you know, why we're here, we're here to help people that are lost sometimes with their health. If you don't have your health, you have very little in life. And believe me, I've been on both both sides of the coin with that. And I watch people over the years. So what's going to happen, we have to take the people who are already doing this and make them a model. And that, here's the model, guys. And for those of you still out there that are still trying the old model, and I don't know whether they're scared to change. I don't know whether it's too much work to go in and do all the research. But you've got guys out there, you've got stores out there now who have done the research. They don't even look. You go into them and maybe you go into one of the more chain uh, accounts that we, you know, the big chains and you don't see this product and that product and that product, but they got a better product to replace it. And the good thing that they have is a loyal customer base. So you walk into a health food store and you're a consumer, right? And you walk in there and you go, okay, I've got, I don't know, gas and bloating, or I've got joint issues, or I've got headache, whatever they've got. You've got someone there listening to them, listening to them and helping them on their health journey. And that's what this is about. So if we don't come together and become a boutique, does it take more work? Because I'll tell you what consumers want. Back to this point, they want to walk into a store. They want to talk to whoever, somebody on the floor or the owner, and they want to know that they want to know what they take. They want to know, what do you take? And that's what people say to me. What do you take? Well, this is what I take. You know what I mean? So they trust. See, there's trust. And the trust is where this is the crux of what we have in this industry. We have trust to a consumer that they're going to walk in there. And I'll tell you how it's manifesting today. I'm out talking about cleansing in the health food stores. And, you know, you would think cleansing 
would be more for the younger people or the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having people that because it's trending on, you know, on Instagram and, and Facebook and all that. I have people that are 80 years old cleansing. I mean, I'm shocked. I'm like, you're cleansing, you know, but the point of it is, is they see cleansing on, let's say Instagram or Facebook. They don't go buy the cleanse that's on Instagram or Facebook. They go to the health food store, right? And they ask that health food store owner, what cleanses do you sell? Because they trust them. But because buying some unknown product, there's probably a hundred of them a day online because I watch that very closely to see what's coming up. And not all of them. I'm not saying all of them are bad at all. I'm just saying that they don't trust that, but they trust that independent retailer. We cannot let that go away. And that's where my my passion and journey is from what Vital Planet can do. What I would like to see is us join together to like what you guys are doing. You're doing a fantastic job of getting the message out there, but we've got to get to these independent retailers who have had, I don't know, ear earplugs <laughs> in. I don't know what they've been doing, but they haven't seen it. And they're still waiting on things to happen now that have, you know, with these other companies that have been bought out and gone mass market and all that, they're still thinking, oh, well, they're they're the end all be all. And they're not. Their, their products have, their formulas have been downside, you know, been, they're not as good as they used to be because you can't do the same margins in, you know, mass market as you can do in an independent retailer. And in the independent retailer, if you're setting up as a new company or a new brand, you have to put the model together. Now, the model is education from us to the store. OK, you can't throw products on a shelf without going into the store and educating, just like you guys know, educating the employees of the retailer on your product. So if you're going into this market, it's not a throw it on like a Walmart or something. It's, you know, I got to get in there. I got to teach these people how to sell this, how this helps the consumer. And that's a big part. I don't know if that's the part that the new people understand or not. But we do. I do it some, too, on social media. I do that piece of it now. I'm trying to I'm trying to get myself better at that, where I can get to the consumer and explain to them. And that you talked about finding the retailer online. I don't have third party sellers on Amazon. We have one site on Amazon. It's us. And we sell at full retail and sometimes over. So they're actually getting a better deal in the health food store they're, they're getting with us. Now I can do that. I can, you know, say I'm not going into Walmart. I'm not going into really whole foods and all that because I don't need it. If you do it correctly, you can take, if we can get the correct, you know, I think the, the key is identifying the market, what's, what's left. And I probably think maybe, because I think probably maybe 10 to 20% have, you know, closed, gone under, but there's still a plethora of stores out there. There are institutions. You look down here in Clearwater, Florida, Nature's Food Patch. That's never going away. I mean, you know, all these stores, Ed uh, Nutrition World, Chattanooga, never going away. These are institutions. They're community. They're where people go because they trust. So this is where, if you're coming into this market, I'm suggesting that you have the the education tools and, you know, you have to develop that to get in these stores and not only help the retailer, but help their consumer at the same time. So you got to kind of do all of it. My husband used to say, Brenda, I used to ask Brenda what we needed to do to promote the product. And she'd say everything. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting to me. And I, I, I've just I've seen this play out in real life where the exact thing that you're talking about, you know, this brand, they've, you know, they've been bought out. They're not supporting the independent anymore. You, you do the research, you find a replacement, you know, there's the brands that are going to always come in and support the independent. They, oh. There are, there's always going to be another, another supporter of that channel that is oftentimes better um, mm -hmm. than, than the, the brand that decided to leave. And then the other thing that I love too, is that the independent retailer, they're, they're so strong in community and they want everyone else to win. Like they don't view each other as competition. And so it's like, I, I'm just, you know, thinking back to those, those Soho road shows where it's like, you have retailers just telling everyone their secrets of what they do to do well. And they're like, 
do what I do. Like it's working for me. They're, they're more than happy to get on the phone with you for an hour and tell you everything that they know, because that's, that's how we all win is when these, all, all of these independent stores start thriving, the whole industry thrives and those brands that support the independents, they're going to thrive. And I, I love what you said about, you know, an alliance type thing with the manufacturers that also support these brands. Cause I think that's the other thing is whether people know it or not, there are this, there's this solid group of manufacturers that are always going to support the independent channel. And sometimes they just get lost in the noise, I think. Um, yeah. So something that they could do to, you know, kind of band together. I, I love that idea. I think, you know, I was hearing a story about a, a major company, mass market, that went mass market, and um, they cut, you know, a lot of their natural uh, educators, salespeople in the natural independent re uh, industry uh, uh, stores. And their thing when they laid off like a hundred people was we just can't afford that business anymore. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what a thought. Um, you can't afford to, to go in and take a product that you've developed that helps a human being and go in and educate a store on why it's beneficial. That's really sad. You know what I mean? But I would love to be part, and I feel like I am, but more a part of an alliance, you know, more a part of carrying that message. Because again, I think a lot of them, you know, it just takes time. You know, a lot of them are waking up, have woken up a long time ago, but we've got a lot of stores out there, guys, that have not. And we've got to get to them. How we do it, I mean, I know we do it through like the SIMPA organization does a lot, but they're regional. You know what I mean? You've got the Midwest, that's regional. You know, so you've got to, you know, I've, I've always wondered, you know, in our organization, like for example, in SIMPA, using something like that organization or any organization. So uh, with, you know, their meetings and your education, things that occur in helping, you know, to move into the direction uh, in education of a different way to a store. And I know, you know, at the shows they do marketing and they do this, but I don't know how we get down into that nitty gritty, you know what I mean? And start saying, okay, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing as an individual store to support the industry and the vendors and the and the manufacturers that really want to do the right thing and help people? <laughs> that's the key. that's why we're here. That's right, help Brenda. We feel the same way, and it's so fun that you are talking about this because that's one reason that we did this podcast. We were like, we need practical steps that people can do so that they can start to grow their revenues so that they can help more people. So you can't do it without money. And we're working with a store right now that's a little bit smaller. And she says to me, like, I would give the supplements away for free if I could help cheat people's change people's lives. But unfortunately, I also have a family. <laughs> so there has to be some revenue growth there as well. But in the end, we are all here to help people and change right. their lives and, and give them something that they haven't found before in, in mass medical or mass market, right? So we're, we are trying to equip these stores to be found and to help them grow their revenue so that they can touch those individual lives. Right. And I think too, you know, it, it's help on a lot of things. I think if you get into pricing and things like that, that's another concept you know, they're looking at, you know, having a line in there that's heavily discounted. They can buy it cheaper online than you can even sell it for. You know what I mean? So you've got to go in and teach them what we call real margins, <laughs> real. What is your real? Because, if, OK, so, for example, you're taking a Vital Planet product. We're not discounting. We do give discounts to the retailers. Obviously, we want to. We'd like to see with that discount that we pass on, that they pass some of it on to the, to their customers, which most of them do. I'm not saying that, but, but their perception sometimes is that product that they've got on the shelf, which is heavily discounted online, which, um, you know, they're selling already at 30 or 35% off, whatever they're selling it for is not the real money they're putting in their pocket. Do you see what I mean? Because we're operating on a margin right? And that we give to them and they're operating off of that margin that's more real because the person is not going online to buy the product. 
uh, at a discount. Go and, and that's the tragedy of it, that the customer goes in there and will stand. I've seen them stand right at that counter, get all the education from that store and punch that button and buy it on Amazon. And I said to a woman one day, do you know what that does to this store? What you just did? Do you know what that does? That puts them out of business. I said, they spend time, they spend money. And, 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 and the other piece of it is, if we can get, this is the other piece that's a bit aggravating, is the fact that I have stores that don't want, don't want us in there educating. They don't want to pay the money for their employees to be um, the hour that we might want to do or the 30 minutes that we might want to do. They're not going to pay their employees. So now we're going in with gas cards and, you know, a, a gift card or something like that to incentivize them to be able to to give it to them or I can give it to the employee, you know, to incentivize them to get the education. That is the crux of this. How willing is that retailer going to be on letting their employee be educated? Now, I understand the way of the world now that people come and they go and the turnovers there, especially in the smaller stores. But what I think with the smaller stores, that's that's critical that they have that some of maybe the larger stores don't is they have the ability to get involved with their community and customer. See, that I think could be a lot of the problem that's missing here. They don't have those ways in their head. You know, a lot of these people I've seen over the years in the natural products industry that have stores, they're not good business people. And in some ways, I think that's why many of them have gone the way of the work, gone by the wayside is because they were in an industry that was constantly growing. And then when it came down, the rubber met the road, they didn't use the tools or tools they were taught to be able to take that business forward when the times got tough. You know, so the ones that are out there left, and I think at this day and age, anybody that's out there left, they got to be pretty strong, you know, as an independent. So I think what's needed is how do we teach them to connect to their market, to come outside? I, I've got people right now in, in, in stores that I say, you need to put this sign there, this sign here, you know, uh, a, a simple thing, a simple thing will give you a simple thing. So there's a store, and, um, they're they're doing they're plodding along, you know, selling every month. So I'm like, how can we use marketing? How can we do something to pull that customer? Because they're let's say they're in a shopping center and there's people walking by, right? Maybe they come in the healthy store, maybe they don't. But a simple sandwich board out on the front that says, got constipation. Guess what? The sales of that store in one year went from 16,000 to the manufacturer to 46. One sign. Wow. It wasn't a busy sign, but people will react and want to do what helps them. So if someone's got constipation, gas and bloating, pain, you know, got pain, come inside and talk to us about it. That's simple. It's not complicated. So it's little things that I think they need to be taught where they get real, you know, closed in about it or they're not marketers. I mean, you know, they're just not. And that's where people like you come in and teach them. This is what you need to be doing. You need a newsletter. I mean, I've got a newsletter, guys, that goes out to I think it's 30, 3,500 people. It's, it's consumers that have signed up for our newsletter and then it's retailers. I've got a 49 percent open rate. That's pretty high. I had no idea we had that open rate on it. That little piece of whether if, if it's an old timer that doesn't have those types of technology, there's ways they can get that. And you know that that type of technology are they uh, the other piece of it is right now on Facebook. So I start doing videos. And then come to find out, um, this store over here wants my video on their Facebook. This store over here wants my video on their Facebook. Oh, on their Facebook. I must have 50 stores now using my videos from Facebook because I'm, I'm talking about maybe a concept of cleansing or, you know, uh, probiotics or something like that. And they could put that on their, on their Facebook. They've got to learn how to do that. It's pretty simple, you know. So getting them engaged with their, I think, with their community uh, it, more and teaching them the tools to simple tools. They're not complicated. Yeah. And you know, the best stores sometimes are the ones out into, in a rural community. 
you know that the best ones i've got some in tennessee that knock it out of the park you know and they're in a rural area a very rural area and that's what we've always had out in the middle of nebraska in the middle of nebraska in the middle of wyoming because they're institutions you know what i mean and people go there but there is the small mom and pop they need help and they need ideas but they need to be able to bring the ideas to fruition you know it's it's like Sometimes when you try something, I think, and it doesn't work the first time, it's like, you know, you sling everything against the wall that you can, everything's not sticking, right? you got to accept that. But we always learn from mistakes, you know, that didn't work. Let's try it this way. That didn't work. Let's try it this way. And sometimes I see people try one, something one time and it doesn't work and they throw it out, you know, and I think we got to teach them it's a little bit of a persistence, you know, patience working through what works in your community too, you know, I yeah. think that's very, different, you know, well, you know, it's interesting that you brought up the, the uh, concept of, you know, not wanting to pay your employees mm -hmm. to sit through an hour long training with an educator. Um, that just kills me. But you know, what's so interesting is, you know, when I first started in this industry, I had no knowledge of it. Like I, I actually was, I, I refuse to take supplements. I'm like this, I don't need these, you know, I'm in my early twenties. I don't need these. And, um, it was because of attending these mandatory trainings that I had <laughs> to go to. It's like, this is part of your job. You will get trained. I started taking like 10 supplements a, a day in a matter of weeks. Cause I was like, this is amazing. And it, it sparked, well, I mean, you know, here we are eight years later, still, still doing this thing, which is fantastic. But I think, at the end of the day, it, it's it's something that these independents can do that these big box stores are never going to do. They they can invest in their people in mm -hmm. as simple as here's an hour off the sales floor to go listen to a training. And it shows a level of investment in that individual that's also going to benefit the store. It, it's, it's, right. it's not just, oh, well, you know, if I send them off to this training and what if they leave in two months? It's like, so what you could have made, you could have made a several hundred more dollars because they got educated on that product. Like to me, it seems like a, a win, win, no matter what, even if they do leave, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to fly them to all the trade shows and all of that with you from the get go, but it's, it's investing in those little moments. That's going to leave a lasting impression. There's an old adage that says you can either train them and they might leave you or you can not train them. But what if they stay? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thought. And, you know, you're right. You know, and what we do as a company is when we go in for the trains, we usually have a broker or we have someone with us that can work the floor. I don't we I tell them, tell me if you're concerned because you're pulling people off the floor tell me if you're doing that and I'll put somebody on the floor for you while we're doing this. Or the other thing, piece that we've done is back to back. So take, you know, part of the people off the floor for now and then take, you know, the next hour, take the other half and break it up into two. But in the end, the independent retailer has such a consultative role for their customer that their customer wants to talk to them. People want to talk to you about their health, especially if it's failed, you know what I mean? And they're having, failure in it. They want to try. I, I do believe people do want to try um, to, to get better. And I think the independent retailer, this is kind of the, the, the crux of who we are, is having that information and, and having uh, employees have that information to be able to pass it on to the customer. That's yeah. Very cool. So we're, we're getting close to the end of our time here. And I wanted to ask you, um, what are some of the things that you think that independent retailers need to be paying attention to over the next, you know, three to five years as it relates to just the industry in general, but also just to the digestive category, since that's your your area of expertise? Well, I think overall, in general, they need to be finding ways. And it, like you, you were saying, trade shows, you know, our trade shows have just become disastrous. I mean, Expo East is pretty much gone or it's going to Colorado and Expo West is so big, the average person can't go to it. So I think what they need to be looking into as an independent retailer is what events are being put on where they can go in and travel and not 
pay a, a huge expense and get educated. They've got to watch out for that, you know, and keep that on their radar where, you know, the Simpas and the Health Fest and the Health Quest and all of these, where can they go and get uh, education? Where can, where can they take advantage of, of companies like Vital Planet who will put on an event? you know, as a company where they can travel to, send their employees to, and we absorb a lot of, absorb a lot of the cost for them. That needs to stay on their radar, absolutely on their radar. As far as looking forward, the number one thing I think that's really important is what we started talking about in the beginning is the pet industry. Because if you go into, let's say, a pet smart, they don't know an enzyme from a probiotic. And most of the, the supplements in there are window dressing. There's nothing in them. So I think developing that conversation with their customer, cross merchandising some of these supplements, especially, you know, the number one selling supplement for, for pets is hip and joint. And we've introduced the probiotic. So I think looking on the horizon, what's new, keeping the internet is good for a lot of things, you know, looking at the trends, like right now, for example, I to, to say I started in cleansing in night what night eighty nine or ninety for myself and now I watch cleansing go do 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 and then about two thousand and eight and nine go do 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 I used to not walk into a health food store or any consumer that they didn't have a badge on that said have you cleansed ask me how right and that's coming back see that's a trend. And like I said, people are seeing it online. The things they're seeing online, but they could go into a store and get more education on it. Watch the trends. All you need is a is a phone or an iPad to go on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever your whatever it may be, and just watch it. There's a lot of I say there's a lot of information, a little knowledge. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the way I look at it. But still, it's looking at the trends and following those trends. And then in digestive care. I think we're getting now into more knowledge about the human microbiome project and how science has moved along. And I think coming up, looking now at uh, more innovative uh, products, we're, we're gaining awareness in postbiotics. And we have a new one coming out with parabiotics, which is the new element of science coming along and what and, and being able in digestive care, uh, getting into motility issues and understanding the, the vagus nerve and all the things wrapped around motility, because a lot of the problems these people are having are like motility, where there's IBS and SIBO and all these conditions and being able to you know, help people as we learn more, then the formulas will be formulated through learning and the practitioners help us with that, you know, because they're in the trenches too with seeing consumers. And that's where my benefit comes from. I'm still in a functional medicine clinic all the time. You know what I mean? I'm seeing what's going on. And I think with the digestive care category, we're just going to see more growth in specific formulas is what I'm saying specific formulas targeted uh, with, you know, probiotics being more targeted, your motility issues being more ta ta uh, targeted, your fibers being more uh, uh, distinguished between what this fiber does and that fiber does and that fiber does, which we're currently working on. So it makes it easier for the consumer to pick something, uh, especially in fiber, because it's so vital for us uh, in moving forward. So I see digestive care growing. It's not going away for sure. And it's not shrinking. It's definitely going to grow. But I think that area, but also that pet area and us giving them some ideas on how to develop that because they close their mind to it. You know, oh, I don't sell to pets. There's a pet smart over there. Well, that pet smart over there, guys, knows nothing, nothing. And they don't even have a supplement over there. They have treats. <laughs> you know, That's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this has been absolutely fantastic, uh, Brenda. I, I really, really appreciate your spending your time with us today and uh, would love to have you back on for another episode at a later date. Yeah. Um, this has just been absolutely fantastic. Everything that I thought it would be, you, you met my expectations and exceeded them. So thank you so much for your time. I love this. When I found out this is what I'm doing, I'm like, oh, okay, great. I'm so excited about it because this is really where my heart is, what you guys are doing. I love this. And I think I come from enough experience from day one through my journey here to be able to offer something, you know, to as well to consumers, as well as to the retailer out there that's got to change. They have to change and change. We don't we don't like change. 
but it's the only thing on this planet that's constant, right? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Brenda, this has been such a pleasure. And if someone did want to get into the pet category, I'm sure they now want to start with Vital Planet. So how do they get in touch with you? Well, you can go to vitalplanet.com and we have on the website pets and everything like that. You can call us, uh, but mostly just go online and we'll be able to have someone help you with, with your pets and look at our supplements. And we're getting innovative in those two, probably going to get organic with them. A lot of things going on. So I thank you so much, ladies, for having me here. This was just really good for me. <laughs> I really enjoyed this more than anything that I can tell you. I've really enjoyed this. Us too. It's so refreshing to hear manufacturers that are fully in support of the, this independent channel. And so we're delighted to have you. Thanks so much for listening to the Natural Products Marketer Podcast. We hope you found this episode to be super helpful. Make sure you check out the show notes for any of those valuable resources that we mentioned on today's episode. And before you go, we would love for you to give us a review, follow, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you're listening today. And make sure you join us for our next episode where we give you more marketing tips so that you can reach more people and change more lives.